Good Morning Life family. We are glad to have you guys here to worship with us today. We ask that you would show your neighbor that you love them by wearing and keeping your face mask on while in the sanctuary at all times. What's good, life? Here's what's good. We want to stay in touch with our first-time visitors and to keep you informed on upcoming events and services. So we have placed QR codes at some of the seats that you can scan with your phones and put your contact information in. This is the year 2022, the year of the follow through. We are going to follow through with prayer every third Friday night at 9 p.m. So come out, get charged up in prayer. We're going to follow through by giving back to the community with our food bank donation. You may be a part of this by bringing canned goods to the church or giving a cash donation, which you can do by cash out or by placing in a tithing envelope and identifying as food bank. We know that we cannot outgive God, but we have three ways you can give here at the Life Center. You can give in person with a tithing envelope or you can give online by going to www.tlcavieville.org. And we also have our smart giving with Cash Out, Dollar Sign Life Center Avenue, and we have Givelify Kingdom Life Training Center. And on every third Sunday, it is our Building Fund Sunday. We ask that you would sow a $22 seed into the vision by going to Cash Out, Dollar Sign the Life Building Fund. Sow into the vision, and remember, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Follow through, follow through, follow through. Lifers, get plugged in. We're looking for you to help fulfill the assignment that God has called the Life Center to. Here are a few areas, but not limited to, where you can plug in. Plug into the praise team. Plug into the ushers. Plug into the media ministry. Get plugged in. Get plugged in. Leave your contact information and the area in which you wish to plug into the entrance door of the church. We invite you to invite someone to church. Lunch out and cast your nets. Thank you. These are our announcements. And we just want to welcome everybody here, amen. And we want to welcome, of course, our uh, Facebook online audience. And we bless the Lord for that. Are you ready to pray? Yes. yes. All right. Amen. Father, we do bless you. We thank you for another day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're choosing to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord God, because it's a good day. We decree and we declare it's a good day. And the word that you have for us on this good day, we thank you for that word. We thank you for anointing Pastor Josh, Lord God, as he comes to speak the word of God. We thank you for opening up our hearts to be able to receive it, open up our ears to be able to hear it. We thank you that this word is not going to go out, Lord, but it's going to accomplish that in which you sent it. You're going to bring transformation to us today, and we thank you for that, Lord God, for the change that you're about to do in us, for the work that you're about to do in us, for the place that you, Lord God, are taking us into, for the lifting that you do in this house. So we bless you and we give you the glory and we give you the praise and we welcome the Holy Spirit in this house. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Come on and shout amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on and give God glory. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Father, we lift you up on high, Lord God, because you are an awesome God, a mighty God, a great God, Lord God. Father, we just honor you this morning, Lord God, and we say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord God, for you being in this place, Lord God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord God, that you have extended to us this day, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that you have allowed us, Lord God, to come into your place of worship, Lord God, to come into your place of worship. Lord God, and commune with you, Lord God. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God, as you said, Lord God, 
Enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise, Lord God. So I thank you, Lord God, that we have thanksgiving in our heart, Lord God. And Father, that we have a praise on the inside, Lord God, that we're going to release, Lord God. Father God, that our praise, Lord God, our praise, Lord God, our praise, Lord God, will cause you to habitate in this place, Lord God. Come on and open your mouths and give God praise. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, Lord God. We give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Come on, can we give God a hand clap of praise one more time? Amen. Really fast, do me a favor. If you came with the person beside you, hug them and just tell them, I love you. I love you. Yeah, yeah. Only if you came with them. Amen. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We thank you uh, for joining us this morning on site and online. Look at somebody and say, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. Turn to somebody behind you and say, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. Listen, we're not pro going to prolong what God is doing. Listen, we are in the middle of a sermon series called Why. Somebody say Why. Why? Because we got a couple of things that we need to answer in this season. Uh, of course, for us, this is our vision season. This is where we're talking about where God wants us to go for the rest of the year. We have a theme. The theme for us this year is, is, is in fact, the year of follow through. Somebody say follow through. follow through. Somebody look up to the sky and say, This year, this year, I'm going to follow through. Uh, say it again. Say this year, this year, I'm going to follow through. Uh, say it one more time with authority. This year, this year, I'm going to follow through. Uh, Amen. So it's the year of follow through for us. What are we following through with, uh, PJC? I'm glad that you asked. We're going to follow through with following Jesus. We're going to follow through with fellowship. We're going to follow through. Uh, uh, with learning how to flourish during famine. We got a lot of things that we're going to follow through with this year. And today we are talking about what we're going to do and why we're going to follow through with fellowship. Uh, for those that have their Bibles, let's go ahead and jump into the Word of God. We're going to go to Hebrews. We're going to go to Hebrews. Hebrews 10. Uh, we're looking at 24 through 25. Hebrews 10. 24 through 25. Uh, do me a favor and stand for the reading of the word of God, and then I'm going to let you sit right back down. That's my word. I'm going to let you sit right back down. Uh, the scripture reads this, and let us not, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And if I had to give you a title to this message, it would be simply this. Why we are fellowshipping. Why we are called to fellowship this year. Let's pray. Father God, thank you once again for this momentous occasion. Thank you once again for this opportunity to be able to deliver this word. Father, I thank you that you've already went before me, oh God, and that you've already made uh, those hard hearts, oh God, that you've already softened them. Father, I thank you, oh God, that they will be receptive to not what PJC has to say, but to what Pastor Jesus Christ has to say. Father, we give you the praise, we give you the glory and the honor. Your precious name we pray, amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. When we dive into this text, we're in the book of Hebrews. Understand that when we look at the book of Hebrews, we don't know who the author is, Brother Mon. We're not for certain, we're not for sure. Many attribute it to Paul. Uh, but it doesn't have, stylistically, it does not look like Paul. It was the third century theologian, origin that said, who is it that really wrote this epistle? He said this, Minister Ross, only God knows. The recipients of this book, whoever the author is, wrote it to those who had became Christians by hearing the preaching of those that had been eyewitnesses to Jesus Christ. Right. It was also written to those that were not recent converts. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, it says that they were novice, meaning that they had been saved a long time. Right. They would be considered to be babes in Christ. And then the last group, it, it was written to those, hear this, this is my notes, to those who had become dull of hearing. Wow. 
and those that were in danger of drifting away from Christ. One of the things that I've seen in this last season, over the last couple of years, of those that have been mature in the word, those that have been saved a long time, how the enemy has caught us, how the enemy has tricked us, how the enemy has made it problematic for the church, is that those that were supposed to be leaders in church have begun to drift away from God. Wow. They begin to drift away from, in fact, their destiny. And so it shows us that we have a need for fellowship. Somebody say fellowship. fellowship. I'm teaching this morning. Say fellowship. fellowship. Fellowship helps you walk into your destiny instead of drifting away. Right. Look at somebody and say, don't drift away. Don't drift away. That was the wrong person. Turn to somebody else and say, don't drift away. Don't drift away. Don't drift away. Here it is. You have to embrace fellowship. Now, one of the greatest scriptures, one of the greatest pericopes that we have in understanding fellowship, Elder Vanessa, is in Acts 2. Everybody should be praying to be an Acts 2 church. That should be the goal. That should be the mindset. That should be the heartbeat that we are after, the Acts 2 church. When you look at Acts 2, 42 through 47, let me read it for you. Let me teach this morning. It says this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Right. And here it is, to the fellowship. Somebody say fellowship. fellowship. Say fellowship again. Fellowship. Say fellowship one more time. Fellowship. To the fellowship, to breaking of the bread in prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold their property and their possessions to give anyone who had in need. Every day they continue to meet together. Now, we complain about meeting once a week. We talk about we want to be the Acts 2 church. Brother Martin, they found a way to meet every day. Wow. Every day they had something going on. That means seven days a week they found a way to come together and fellowship in some sort. Now, I know people have jobs. I know people have things going on. But we should have a community where we feel each other's presence every day. Somebody say every day. Every day. Whether it's on site or online, we have technology. We have ways that we can in fact fellowship. It goes on to say this, once again, verse 46. Every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts. It says this. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Yes, sir. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Now, I feel like I'm a part of the church growth movement. Here it is. This right here gives you a specific pattern of how you are to grow. You have to first and foremost begin to fellowship. It's a lot of things that are in this text right here that we have to do in order to grow. I'm not just talking about in number. I'm talking about mentally, physically, spiritually, socially, and even economically. If you want to grow, you have to begin to fellowship with the right people. Somebody say fellowship. fellowship. Not just fellowship with the right people. Over this time, over this season, today is the last day of the fast. Of the fast. From, from January 12th to yeah. January 23rd, each and every person under the sound of my voice that's connected to the Life Center, you should have had a greater level of fellowship with God. Amen. 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 Only three people said amen. amen. Right. So you should be getting your word every day. You should have been, and I'm moving before uh, uh, my message, you should be communing with God. Wow. Fellowshipping with God over the last 12 days. He should have been the first thing that you thought about in the morning. He should have been the last person that you talked to when you went to sleep at night. You should have made it your business to fellowship with God. The word fellowship, when you look up the word in the Greek, it expresses the idea of being together for mutual benefits. Why is it important to fellowship with God? Not only does it benefit you, it benefits him. It benefits both parties. Why should you, be, why should you fellowship with your brother and sister? It benefits them and it benefits you. So it's a couple of things that I want to go over really fast this morning. That fellowship gives us. What does fellowship give us, Pastor Josh? I'm glad that you asked. The first thing that fellowship gives us is a photo. Somebody say a photo. Photo. It gives us a photo of what the life should look like. It gives us a photo. It shows, watch this, 
each of us together shows of all of God's graces in the world. No one is perfect. Let me give you my notes. We all sin, but each of us have a purpose on earth to show the aspects of God to those around us. Each of us has been given specific gifts. When we come together in fellowship, it's like us as a whole demonstrating God. Right. Red, yellow, black or white, we are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. We give a glimpse of what heaven looks like when we all come together. Amen. Different cultures, different races, different ethnicities. Watch this different social class. You may have a lot in your bank account. I may have a little. You may have what the world calls a big time job. I may have a little time job. Right. Does not matter. We get a picture of what the kingdom looks like because everybody is grouped together. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. Somebody say together. Together. Somebody say fellowship. fellowship. Here it is. We create a photo. Somebody say photo. 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 Okay, here it is. Brother Mon, throw your mask on. Come up here. Elder Bryson, come up here. Brother Mike, come up here. Lady J, come up here. Here it is, this own spot, right, right, right. So right here, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in together, come in together. Watch this. And so uh, say somebody in front of them uh, that's behind the screen had a camera. So y'all get ready to pose like you're taking a picture, right? Okay, you're not gonna look at me. The camera's right there, right? So they pose them, right? Ain't nobody got that jailhouse pose. Ain't nobody on their knees, no nothing, right? So, okay, all right, so they have this photo that we're taking, right? So, watch this. You go sit down. Right? And so, is the photo that was taken before complete or incomplete? It's incomplete. It's incomplete. Why? Because somebody is missing. Okay, five people caught there. Yeah. This is what the body looks like. This is what the photo of the life looks like. This is what the photo of the church looks like when you remove yourself from fellowship. Come on now. The picture is no longer complete. Not because the world brought you out. Not because people brought you out. One of the biggest issues that we have in the church today is people removing themselves Come because of now. fellowship. You taking yourself out the photo. Nobody pulled you out. You willingly walked off. Right. And when somebody tried to get you to come back in the photo, you get mad at them. Come yeah. on. But we're supposed to be the example of what a photo looks like. Right. Yes. So people can see us, watch this, not separated, but together. Somebody say together. together. Yeah. Amen. You guys take your seat. And so I want you to always think about what does the photo look like if I'm not in it. The photo looks like uh, what would look like and would taste like a cake not properly put together. Right. So here it is. You guys are better bakers than I am. Uh, let, let's just do it. Um, here it is. You throw out some things that are supposed to be inside of a cake. Right. Somebody just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just scream out. Eggs. Eggs. What else? Yeah. Flour. What else? Milk. 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 What else? Butter. 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 What else? Sugar. 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 What else? Separate. Flavoring. What else? All this stuff that's supposed to be in a cake. Here it is. Let me get that group right back again. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We moving. I'm going to keep your attention this morning. Hey Amen. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. So, Brother Mon is the flour. Yes, sir. Right? Elder Bryson is the eggs. Brother Mike, what you, what, what you want to be? He want to be the chocolate, Jesus. Amen. Hey Amen. Hey he said it too fast. He was waiting on that. What you want, Brother Mike? I'll be chocolate. Right. <laughs> Watch this, watch this. So he the sweetener. What would a cake taste like if we didn't have what? Flour. Right, he the flour. Yeah. What would a cake taste like without the flour? Can't make it. Can't make it without me. Hold up, somebody said it. It ain't no cake. Ain't no cake. Okay, I, 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 I'm trying to get take it to an extreme for you. What is a cake without the, what are you? Egg. The eggs. It won't rise. It won't rise. It won't rise. Okay, two people called that. What is the egg? I mean, what is the cake if you ain't got no, if you ain't got no child? No bread. No bread. Somebody said corn bread. Y'all crazy. Y'all need cheese. Somebody said they said corn bread. Sweet bread. Listen, we don't have the eggs, right? We don't have the flour. It ain't no cake. No cake. No 
escape without flowers. Could it be the reason why the church had went forward? Because we're missing the flower? Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could it be that God has gifted you to be the flower in the right. church? Come on, Pastor. Here it is. We don't have no eggs. So somebody said it won't rise, right? right. Did somebody say that? Come on, here. Could it be you're the missing ingredient for the church Come that we didn't allow? Come on, here. Okay, I'm talking to three people. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Could it be that, watch this, the reason why the church has lost this flavor is because you're not in it? Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. This is the issue, Minister Ross. I need them to hear me. You sweet, but you need them to as well. Come on, man. So you can have all the sweet that you want, but you'll never be a whole king. Come on, you can have all the eggs that you want. If you ain't got no frying pan, you ain't going to be scrambled. You're just going to be regular eggs. So you can have all the eggs that you want, but you are never going to be anything without this flour and without this wheat. Anybody, watch this, ever tried to taste flour by itself? If you ever ate flour by itself, you got some issues and you got some problems. And we need to hold this deliverance service to pray for you after service. Watch this. But when the flour gets with the eggs and the eggs get with the chocolate, you can make something that's dynamic. When you come together and begin to fellowship with each other, you alone ain't going to get it done. But us together makes all the difference. Somebody give God a hand clap praise for my cake. Ooh, so here it is. We have to understand that God has graced us all to be able to be in fellowship together. Graced us all. Watch this. Here's the key word. Write this down. Somebody put this down in your phone. What is God calling us to do in this season? Stick together. Wow. Did you hear what I just said? God has called us to stick together. Yes. What's amazing that when you put everything in that bowl, it sticks. Right. Watch this. Have you ever, anybody that made, has made eggs, right? right. Uh, and, and shout out uh, to my uncle, amen, on Christmas, on Christmas Eve, uh, we had a party, and he put me over the egg. Amen. I thank God for him trusting me like that to be able to cook. Amen. He saw something in me that nobody else has seen. Uh, that not only can I deliver the word, I also can cook eggs. Amen. Put that on my resume right now. Watch this. But watch this. As I was cracking the eggs, as he forced me to do, uh, as I was putting these eggs together, I learned something. When you put the eggs in the bowl together, you can't separate them. Wow, that's good. Three people got there. Yeah, three people. Did you? <laughs> three people. Watch this. What if we were like the eggs when God put us in the bowl and nothing could remove us from each other? How powerful would we be if we stuck together? Look at somebody and say, let's stick together. In the words of Al Green, he said this. Come on, Pastor Johnny. He said, let's stay together. Yeah. Okay, I guess y'all don't know Al Green. He yeah. said, what? Yeah. Let's stay together. Yeah. Whether good, what? Whether what? Bad. Let's. Come on, come on. You know the song. Let's stay together. Y'all so insane. Right? Yeah, I took y'all back. Some of y'all don't want to stop saying <laughs> Yeah, you've been on gospel music for the last 12 days. You're trying to get some R&B in, ain't it? <laughs> Al Green said, let's stay together. The good, the bad, the happy, the sad. That's where the church has to be in fellowship. Come to hell or high water, we're going to stick it out. We're going to tough it out. We're going to fellowship. I don't know how we're going to fellowship. Maybe we got to do it over teams. Maybe we got to do it over Zoom. Maybe we got to come into a church house where everybody got a mask on. But we have to be the example to the world that we will not disperse that we will not be separated, yeah. that we will in fact stay together. Yeah. It gives us a photo of life. It gives us a photo of God's love. Somebody say God's love. God's love. Fellowship helps us express God's love to one another. How, here's a question, Prophetess Bro. How would God say that the world would identify the church? Yeah. How? How would people understand who we are as Christians? One word, by your love. 
John 13 and 35 says this, a new command I give to you. Right. Love one another yes, as I have loved you. So you must love one another. Yes, Here it is, verse 35, write it down. Mm -hmm. By, this, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. Yeah. If, somebody say if. Yeah. If, somebody say if. Yeah. Say if one more time, say if. Yeah. If you love one another. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The people, we want the people in the world to understand who we are. What do we simply have to do, Minister Morton? Love one another. Absolutely. But we haven't been able to show love to one another because we have separated ourselves. Watch this. We had to come in communion. We have fell out of fellowship with each other. Fellowships reminds us that we are not alone. Whether you believe it or not, you need somebody to get to the next level in life. If you had all the goods, all the giftings, you would have been, got to the place where you thought you needed to be. But you need somebody. Come here, Hezekiah Walker. I need you to, to, to survive. I need you. You need the person beside you. You need the person behind you. You need, watch this, the good and the bad, the happy right. and the sad. You need these type of people in your life in fellowship to get to that next place, to get to that next space. 1 Corinthians 12, 21 says this, the eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. That's the New Living Translation. You need every part of the body. When we talk about the church, we, talk, we use the example of a body. You can't say that you don't need your hand. You can't say that you don't need your foot. You can't say that you don't need your head. You can't say that you don't need your legs. Everybody needs their parts of their body just like the church needs you. Look at somebody and say, we need you. We need you. It's a photo of love. It's a photo of learning. Fellowship helps us grow. How is that, Pastor Josh? Let me give you scripture so you won't think that I'm making up. It says this. 1 Corinthians 14, 26. It's an order of worship, Brother Mon. It says yes, this. Sir. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of, uh, each of you have a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. And so you coming into the body, you coming into the house of the Lord, watch this, you have something to give to be able to help the church grow. Everybody has a gift. Watch this. You have a gift to be able to do something to help empower the body of Christ. Right. Watch this. If God is giving you a gift to teach, why aren't you trying to teach in the church? If God is giving you a gift to serve, why aren't you serving in the church? Right. If you went to school for something, watch this. It will make no sense if I went to school, to seminary, to learn, Elder Vanessa, how to be a better minister, how to be a better preacher, leader, how to be a better distributor of God's gospel. And then I came in here and I just sat on my gift. Not only are you slapping yourself in the face. Here it is. I know this is tough. I know this is rough. Yes, if sir. you have a gift like that, you're right. slapping God in the face. Right. Why? Because God has gifted you, watch this, on, to baby. build up his church. Yes, sir. I'm not backing off of that. I'm sorry. Yes, I don't care who don't like that. Watch this. God has given you a gift. Right. He's given you opportunities. He's put you in rooms to build up his house. Why? Because souls have to be saved. Amen. Amen. That's real. Look at somebody say that's real talk, though. Real talk. Yeah, so we're telling the truth. It gives us a photo. Watch this. Uh, of, of, of life, of learning. It gives us a photo of God, of how we grow through the learning. Fellowship gives us a photo. Number two, fellowship gives us power. Somebody say power. Power. Matthew 18, 19 through 20. Right. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything, they ask for it. It will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am with him. So that means if just a couple of, of us are in here, we can command some things. Right. We can become powerful. Yes, sir. Yes. That means that we can change some things. Yes. You know, an uh, interesting statistic that I learned on last week is good and is bad. Wow. In order to change an entity, a business, a culture, statistics show, mm -hmm. it only takes three to five percent. Wow. That's powerful. That's, That's positive. 
What's the negative, Pastor Josh? In a business, in an entity, in a culture, it only takes three to five percent to mess it all up. Right. So that same three to five percent can build it up, or that same three to five percent can tear it down. Let's talk about church for a minute. That's why you'll have three to five percent of people that's being negative, and then the whole church become negative. Yeah. Wow. You have three to five percent people, watch this, that's being positive, that's changing culture, and then the whole church shifts. Right. Here's a question I do not want you to raise your hand. What three to five percent are you? Come on. Ain't nobody said nothing. That's good. Every time you come in the house of the Lord, every time you begin to fellowship, are you always seeing the negative or are you are, are you seeing the positive? Right. I told him this year, uh, 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 Minister Moore, this year we had, so, you gave me so many problems in the last two years. When are we as a group, as the church, as the whole church, the invisible church, sister, right. listen, when are we going to start finding the solutions? That's good. We should know we've been in church for all of our lives. We know what don't work. Why won't we find out what does work? Yeah. Instead of becoming the person that's always thinking about what's wrong. Right. Uh -huh. We don't do this in the church. We don't do that in the church. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Somebody told me that one time. I said, this is the question that I want to pose to you. How are you going to help change what we don't do? Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I'm talking to some grown folk now. Yes, sir. So when people come to you with negativity, how you gonna put it back in their corner? Watch this. God showed you the negativity. Right. How is He gonna gift you to change? Oh, because it's easy to talk about how all things are bad until you get put in that position. Yeah, absolutely. It's easy to talk about how you would do things different until you're put in that position where you have to change it. Right. right. And so watch this, maybe, just maybe, God is pulling on you from a standpoint of fellowship to group with a people to be the 3 to 5% that will not be negative, but the 3 to 5% that will be positive. Yes. Watch this, uh, 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 when they were getting ready to go into the promised land, uh, they, they sent out 12 spies. Right. They sent out 12 spies, you know the story, and they said, go out, look at the land. Two. How many came back with a good report? Two. Joshua and Caleb came back with a good report. Uh, uh, the rest of them said, um, we can't do it. They look like giants. We look like ants. And so it has a lot to do, and I can't jump into that. It has a lot to do with why you're negative of how, what you look at yourself as. Okay, no, nobody don't want to talk about that. It has a lot to do with the identity. And so watch this, because you don't know who you are and because you don't know what God has graced you to walk into, you reflect that on everybody else and talk about how bad it is when you don't believe that you can walk into the place that God has called you to walk in. Ain't nobody going to say amen about that because don't nobody want to check themselves. And so you will reflect things on what Brother Mon is not doing. Right. Come on, Instead of looking at yourself and saying, what can I do to help us get into the promised land? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Okay, whole nother conversation for a whole nother time. So watch this. We know that Joshua and Caleb was the only group, uh, the only two out of that group to go into the promised land. The negative overrode the positive. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so we fast forward 40 years later and Joshua is now the leader. Absolutely. He watched what Moses did. He, did. he never degraded. He never belittled it. He just said, I got to do it different and I got to find a solution. Right. Here it is. You go back and read the text. So you can watch this. Instead of sending out 12, Joshua sent out two. Right. Please don't miss that. Did you hear what I just said? That's good. That's Moses sent out 12. Yeah. Watch this. Two came back with a good report. Joshua sent out two because he knew what they was going to come back and say. Because if I get two, watch this, and I ain't got nobody else to worry right. about the negative. Right. Watch this. I know they're going to come back with the positive. They're going to push everybody else to believe. I just need two people that's going to believe with me yes, that yes, we sir. can change this city. I just need two people that say, Pastor Josh, I believe that we can change this region. I believe, Pastor Josh, that we can do something that has never been done. Never been done Listen, before. if you're negative, I need you to just jump on that side. I just need all the positive people rocking and rolling to say, we can take the promise. I'm just teaching this morning. 
when they do come to you with the negativity, are you bold enough to put them in check right there? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. That's good. That's good right because for so long in the church, here it is, in fellowship, this is why I love that boy Paul, because Paul was not a peace keeper, he was a peacemaker. I wow. said this last Sunday. He didn't believe in keeping the peace. He believed in making the peace. And in making peace, that means that there has to be some moments where I confront you immediately. Now I wait a year before I tell you how I felt. Now I wait three years, four years, five years, and all this stuff that built up in them and that built up in you. But if I see you, if I'm in fellowship with you, let's have a relationship where I can come talk to you, where we can put this stuff out on the table because we have too much to accomplish yes. to be losing out because we ain't talking, because we ain't rocking, because we don't have the same mindset. It gives us power. What does it give us power to do? And this is what I believe, Apostle Deborah, and this is what I've been praying for, that God, through this fellowship, through us coming together, that God will give us the power to heal the sick. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? Uh -huh. What do you mean by the sick, Pastor Josh? Well, let me give you James 5 and 14. It says this. Is anyone among you sick? Yeah. Let them call the yeah. elders of the church yeah. 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 to pray over them and right. anoint them with That's oil true. in the name yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. This is Bible. Yeah. This is Bible. And the prayer yeah. offered in faith will make the sick person well. Right. Yeah. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Wow. The prayer of a righteous person yeah. is, watch this, powerful yeah. and effective. Yeah. I believe that fellowship gives us power. Yeah. What are, is the sickness that you're talking about, Pastor Josh? Come on here. Well, I know that we continuously, let's be praying for people, no if, ands, or buts, that are dealing with COVID, right. that are dealing with flu, that are dealing with all type of viruses. But you know one of the biggest sicknesses that I believe that we need to be healed from? It's the same sicknesses that a group of people had in 1 Samuel 22. Okay. 1 Samuel 22 and 2, it says this. All those who were in distress, all those who were in debt, yeah. and watch this, all those who were disconnected. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Distress, Come on. debt, and disconnected. Three Ds. Distress, uh -huh. debt, and disconnected. What have we seen over the past two years? Distress, debt, and disconnected. Yeah. What are we seeing because of COVID? Distress. What are we seeing because people are not gathering? Disconnected. What are we seeing because people haven't been able to go to their job? Debt. It's been a sickness. Three Ds. Distress, debt, and disconnected is what God wants to heal the body of Christ from. No if, ands, or buts. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how much you fast. I don't care how saved you are. Right. One of those things has hit you in the last three years. Right. Not just the last three years, but the last three months. Right. Some of y'all the last three weeks. Yes, sir. Some of y'all the last three minutes. Distressed, dead, and disconnected. Right. No if, ands, or buts. You ain't got to argue with me. Right. It ain't no room for no argument. Because right. I know. Why? Because the Spirit told me and the Spirit told you. Yeah. You feel it in your spirit. You know when you're distressed. Come on, boy. You know when you're in debt. And watch this. You know when you've been disconnected. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Ain't nobody trying to call and tell you. Watch this. I went to this. I, I, I went to a show over in Greenwood during Christmas time, and I ran into one of the brothers in the ministry. Ran into one of the brothers in the ministry. Watch this. I walked up to him and I said, Hey, brother, how you doing? I pray your family is doing well. He didn't ask me how my family was doing. He didn't say how his family was doing. That was his first response. Pastor, I know you ain't seen me at church. <laughs> ain't nobody gonna say nothing. Come on. Wow. Because every day you wake up and you know you're missing the connection. That's good, Pastor Josh. Woo! <laughs> you know what it is that you're supposed to be connected to. Watch this. These chairs, this is good, it's connected. Right. Right? When I lift it up, lift it up, Elder Bryson, and disconnect it, watch this, put it over there, put it in the middle. Everybody that walks in the church know that a glaring piece is missing. Mm. 
Yes, sir. Come on here. Come on, Pastor. Not only do people see you gone, this chair knows that it's gone. Okay, I'm trying to help somebody now. We just, we just talked about fellowship, right? And so watch this. Here it is. This is It's a twofold question. If this, if this chair had a mind, if this chair could think, if it could talk, the first question I ask, why wouldn't you put yourself back in place? What is this spirit in the kingdom that have allowed people to take themselves out of position. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, amen, this morning. It's all good. Watch this. So this chair took itself out of position. But this is the next question. As brothers and sisters of Christ, we got to do a better job on, watch this, of going to get the chair Come on here. and helping them get back in position. It's something that Elder Pat always says to everybody. Two words, stay connected. Stay connected. Stay connected. I don't know how. Some way, Amen. somehow, Amen. stay connected. Amen. Just stay connected. Now, I know what you're going to say, Pastor Josh. What if they keep disconnecting themselves? Right. That's good, man. Can I free some people up? Absolutely. It's only so much you can do. Come on. Yeah, Come on, man. Damn, let me free some people up now. Yeah. Yeah. I call Watch this. Disconnect. I called you. No, I'm disconnect. Mm -hmm. I called you. All right. I text you. All right. I done came by your house. Come on now. I shot you an email. That's it. Watch this. I'm not the Holy Spirit. Come on. Yeah. 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 Okay, can I talk to somebody? Maybe, just maybe, I just got to give them over to God. That's it. Wow. Sometimes, it looks like you may have given up on a person to other people. But God understands when you've given them over to him. Everybody's not going to understand when you stop rocking with everybody. Right. Because this is what I found out a long time ago, that I'm not the Messiah. Come on. Amen. That I'm not Jesus. Yes, sir. And that I don't have it for everybody. Right. But the Holy Spirit does. Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me just go ahead and throw this out here as a disclaimer. What's the reason so many people disconnect themselves? Wow. This is my wow. notes. Because of disappointment. Yeah. Yeah. Disappointment. Good. Disappointment in themselves. And let me say this. Disappointment in leaders. Yeah. Let me just go ahead and throw this out here as a disclaimer. We had people join the church. Can we give God a hand clap of praise for that? We had several people join the church uh, over last week. We have uh, some people that are going to join the church this week. I believe that every week somebody's going to join the church. But can I, can I say this as a disclaimer, Minister Ross? I got this from Ford Taylor. Y'all don't like this. Here it is, Elder V. I am not God. Yeah. Can I say that? Yeah. <laughs> Let me say that again. As a pastor, I'm not God. Amen. <laughs> Can I say this and nobody get mad? I'm going to disappoint you. Amen. Let me say that again. Come on, Pastor. As a pastor and a leader, we need to be more open. Yeah. There's some things in my life, when you get close to me, I'm going to disappoint you with. Come on, Pastor. Oh, I'm trying to free some people up now. Amen. Because in your mind, you want to hold the pastor and leaders to standards. Here it is, Sister Lisa. You're going to shout on this that you won't even hold yourself. Amen. Yeah. You want the pastors and the leaders to know everything about your life. Yeah, come on, boy. But you won't take the time to know anything about anybody else. You better say it. Come on, pastor. And so as a disclaimer, when you come to the Life Center, know that I'm going to disappoint you. Yes, right. Know that I may even hurt you. Yeah. But I've said this when I first took over at the Life Center. I said, if I ever do something to hurt you, do not count it to my heart, count it to my head, because it was something that I did not know. And watch this. Could it be that I'm disappointed and I've hurt some right. people because of things that I didn't know? I would not purposely hurt anybody, just like my prayer would be that you wouldn't purposely hurt anybody. Right. We have to know that we'll watch this. We are not perfect. We just serve a perfect God. That's why fellowship is so powerful because it's a group of imperfect people serving a perfect God. We all mess up at times. This is what I love about David. Watch this. The distress came to him. Right. Those in debt came to him. Those that were disconnected came to him. Watch this because they knew he was 
imperfect. But they were tired of Saul. Come on, come on, come on, Did you hear what I just said? They were tired of Saul. Come on, here, Meaning that they were tired of control. Come on, Did you hear what I just said? You will connect with David when you're tired of Saul controlling your life. Only when you're tired of Saul controlling your life and tired of Saul abusing you. What is abuse? Abuse is control, watch this, or correction without compassion. Where did that come from, PJC? Somebody need to tweet that. That was good. Abuse is this. Write it down. Abuse is compact co correction without compassion. Yeah. That's something, watch this, that we've been key on doing. Why I love that brother David is because whenever he corrected, he corrected with compassion. Yeah. Right. Correction with compassion. Is love and not abuse. Yeah. That's good. That's good. And you gotta be willing to take both if you want to come out of the distress, the debt, and if you want to stop being disconnected. Look at the person beside you and say, "Stop being disconnected." You can put that back up. Because watch this: they were in distress, they were in debt, and they were disconnected. This is what the verse says. This is what they did to come up out of. They gathered around him. Wow. They gathered around him, and he became their commander, and about 400 men were with him. Yeah. These men gathered around David because they were tired of Saul. These are my notes. This is what's key. While David could only see the cave, yeah. come on. Come on. those who came with him saw the crown. Come on. Come on. Come on. Your prayer is God, send me those in my life yes. and see the crown in my life. Yes. Because it's a level that God wants to take you to to give us, take us to, to give us the power to be able to deliver people from the debt that they're in in their life, Amen. the distress, and the disconnectedness Amen. that they feel. My God. Because in fellowship, you can learn things. Can I say this? When you get connected with people, you learn things that you might not have known. Wow. Can I say this? When you get connected with people, you pull on the God that's in them. Amen. Some people that are in financial debt, you need somebody to put you on a financial plan. Uh -huh. Could that person be in the church that you need to connect with that's totally out of debt? Come on. Okay, nobody saying amen. amen. Whatever it is that you need, I don't care what house it is, it's in the room. Amen. amen. That's good. It's in the house to be able to get you out of what it is that you feel that you're in. It gives us the power to heal the sick. Because it's things in your life that begin to stack up against you that you need help for. Amen. Wow. Let me show it to you. Minister Ross, come in for a minute. Come in for a minute. Let, 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 let's do it like this. Grab that chair. <clears throat> yeah. Grab that chair right here. Put it right there. Grab that chair beside it. Yeah. Stack that chair on there. Yeah, grab that next chair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want this to, to sink in. Uh -huh. Grab that next chair right there. Yeah. Grab me another chair. Grab me another chair. Grab me another chair. How, how many chairs is that? No, let's stay there. Stay there. Stay there. That, that, that's good. And so God spiritually told me a couple of things that are stacked up against you in this season. Mm. Come on. The first thing is sickness. Wow. Mm. Good. The next thing is the scariness. Mm, scary. Because believe it or not, we have people in here that have been overcome by fear. Ooh, that's good. Bro. It's the scariness of life, the scariness to live. Right. Can I tell you, if you want to properly live, come here, Steve Harvey, you're going to have to take a jump. Wow. Yeah. And that jump is going to be scary. And that jump does not make sense to the person beside you. It doesn't make sense to the person on your left. It does not make sense to the person on your right. Why? 
because it does not make sense to you. Amen. But when you jump, you got to know that regardless of the mountain that you bump, regardless of how much it is that you are scared or, or you fear flights, that God is going to eventually catch you up. <laughs> wow. That's what you have to understand. And so we have sickness that's been stacked up against you. You have scariness that have been packed up against you. Here it is. You have stucky. Here's a, here's a made up word. Stickiness that is stacked up against you. Because I'm not talking to everybody, but it's about 20 of you and about 30 people online that you stuck. Wow. You've been stuck there for the last three years. Wow. Stuck there for the last three months. Some of you have been stuck in a place for the last 10 years. And so you've been stuck in a place. Mm. And because you've been stuck, what did it do? It made you sluggish. Wow. Gee. Come on. One of the greatest spirits that have attacked the body of Christ, and you ain't got to say amen, is laziness. Amen. 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 It's the spirit of the sluggard. Wow. You don't even want to get up anymore. Wow. Listen, I love online church. I'm not saying that it's the devil. It's not the devil, but it's the way that we use things. And so watch this. On Sunday mornings, instead of you being a joyous to get up, to go and step in the presence of God, I don't feel like getting up this morning. Wow. So I'm just going to let, watch this. I'm going to lay in my bed and I'm going to listen to the sermon. Wow. But how many times do you listen to the sermon, watch this, and the sermon end up listening to you sleep. Come on, right. Amen. Okay, nobody gonna say amen. Maybe I'm just by myself. Amen. How many times have you got up in the morning? This is me. Can I say, Pastor Josh? Watch this. I'm gonna put my devotion on. Then I'm gonna go into worship. But the devotion end up listening to me. Mm -hmm. amen. 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 And so things that we used to be vibrant about. Yes, yeah, sir. Come things on here. that we used to get up and want to run and want to do. Watch this. Over the last three years, you find yourself not wanting to do nothing at all. Yeah. Wow, boy, that's yeah. good. Come on, Pastor. Preach it. Okay, we're just speaking truth. Are we going to talk truth today? Truth. Are we going to teach? Truth. And so you find all this stuff stacked up against you. Watch this. You come to the realization, Pastor Josh, I've been, I've been scared. I've been sick in some places. Right. Pastor Josh, I've been scared in some places. Right. Pastor Josh, I've been stuck in some places. Right. Yeah. Pastor Josh, I've been sluggish in some places. Right. And then this is what you try to do. Come on. Mm. My God. You try to pick it up and move it by yourself. Come on, Sam. Come on. You preach it, boy. All this stuff, watch this. You done stacked on you. Wow. Or oh, watch this. Here it is. Brother Mike, bring me another chair. Brother Mom, bring me another chair. Come on. Not only have you stacked stuff on you, but because you're so saved and sanctified, you let people stack stuff on you. Come on, now. Come on, now. That's good. Come on, now. Preach it. Yeah. Yeah, what your Holy Ghost feels self. Yes, sir. Come on, Preach it, boy. Yeah, fast yourself. Yes, sir. Laying out before God, self. Preach, boy. That person right there, they prophesy in the parking lot all the time. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> so you can prophesy to everybody else, but you can't prophesy to yourself. You to bring yourself. And I'm talking to Pastor John now. That ain't for nobody but me. Can, can I say that? That wasn't for y'all. God gave that to me for me. Come on here. You can prophesy to everybody else, but you can't prophesy this stuff off yourself. That's yeah. good. You can pray everything else off somebody, but you can't pray yourself through Come this. Come on here. Because it's a, God is telling you, you need help. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on here. Yes, sir. Come on here. You need help. Amen. It's only so far your vision can go. Come on here. Before you partner with somebody else. Is a billionaire. Somebody say that again. She just prophesied. He a billionaire with his crazy self, and I love yeah, I love the old yeah, the backpack yeah, with the with the teddy bear yeah, old school yeah, right? If Kanye West, with his billions of dollars, understand if he want to get to the next level of life to partner with somebody, why we can't? Come on. Earlier this week. 
Kanye West with the Adidas brand yeah. partner with Michael Jordan. Yeah. So the world get it, but we don't get it. We don't get it that maybe, just maybe, I can get some of this stuff that's stacked up on me. Maybe I can pick it up and move it and disperse it if I call somebody to help me. Watch this. So here's somebody with wisdom. Yeah. Try to pick it up again. Can't get it. Try to pick it up again. Try to pick it up again. This is what you look like. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. And as a consequence, trying to pick up something that's heavy, you done threw your back out. Come on. <laughs> the spiritual issue has leaked over into your physical life. Yeah. Come on. Okay, ain't nobody said nothing on your back. And you wonder why your back hurting every day. You wonder why you got a headache. You wonder why your body aching. Because you trying to pick up things in the spirit that you hadn't been lifting weights for. Did I say So watch this. Your capacity in the spirit is only to pick up two chains. But you with your fasting self. Come on, Bill. With your saved self. Come on, here. You think you can pick up all one, two, three, four, five, six chains. Y'all know I'm all about numbers. Numbers, number six is the number of man. Number six is the number of flesh. So what you're picking up, instead of it being spiritual, becomes flesh. Come on here, Pastor. And you need some help in staying out your flesh. <laughs> Could it be that the reason why you don't fellowship right. is not because it's spiritual, right. because it's all fleshly? Oh, oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. We just teaching. Yeah. We just talking. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you want to fellowship if they're your brothers and your sisters? Amen. Right. Why wouldn't you want to fellowship if you're not offended? Right. Why wouldn't you want to fellowship? Watch this. If you have a love of God in your heart, wow. why wouldn't you want to fellowship if you know how to be obedient? So watch this. He calls for some help. Two words. Come on, Kevin Hart. Help me. Help me. So he called for the man of God. He called for the man of God. Can I say this? Elder Thomas just saw in my message. Don't nobody know you need help until you open your mouth. This stuff is simple this morning. I'm just teaching. I, I did, I did, I did one of my students like this one time. <laughs> as prophetic as I am, I still can't read her mind. Wow. <laughs> Three people caught me. <laughs> You got other people looking, thinking that they can read your mind. Come on, Pastor. Tell me what you're thinking. She said, I don't want to know. Tell me what you're thinking. Stop looking at me like that. You look crazy. But I would never, I would have never known that she was thinking that until she opened up her mouth. And so he opens up his mouth and says, What? Let me get some help, fellas. Let me get some help, fellas. Could it be? Now, this is what you got to know right. in fellowship, and right. this is what I'm learning. Right. He may ask Elder Bryson, watch this, ask Elder Bryson. Can you give me some help, please? And Elder Bryson may say no. Yeah. No. Right. Go sit down. <laughs> no, I can't help you this time. Watch this. So, he was ready to help. That's all he know. Watch this. We're we, we just walking through some things this morning, and I hope it's going down. It's spiritually going down. We're just teaching this morning. He asked Elder Bryson to help him. He said no. But watch this. What did he go back and do? Some of you already know that you can't pick up. But because somebody told you no, you're going to go back to the old. Come on, Pastor. That's good. That's good. That's real good. That's real good. That's good. We have to know that being Christians, that being leaders, 
one, one, one part of this Christian life, of this Christian world that we fall into play is with rejection. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm going to spend a whole series on what rejection looks like. Because a lot of people struggle through it, and you don't know the reason why you live and act the way you act is because you're still struggling with a level of rejection from your mama, from your daddy, from your boss man, from your girlfriend in the ninth grade, from your boyfriend that told you you were ugly in the sixth grade. Yeah, all of that stuff. Y'all laughing, but for real, for real, this stuff sows seeds into your life. And watch this, you got a word by the monkey balls in first grade that they thought your teeth was messed up. And so now you spend the rest of your life trying to prove that you got the perfect smile. You overcompensate for it. So watch this, Jesus understood what rejection looked like. He had thousands drop down to hundreds, drop down to 70, drop down to 12. Did you hear what I just said? And only he only got through to eleven of them, and they only got they only got the word when he died. Oh, come on, my love. that's good, boy. My love. And so you would be crazy to think that you're gonna ask some people to do some things that you know God then called you to do, and they tell you no. Wow. Can I help free you up to know yes, sir. that if they tell you no time and time again? They might not be the ones. Wow. And if they are the ones, let God deal with them. Amen. You'll drive yourself going back to him 40 and 50 times. Hey man, you'll help me. 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 When God has rams in the bush. That is a couple of people that he simply asked one time, hey man, will you help me? Hey man, will you help? Yep. And they help him pick up the load. Mm -hmm. oh, now, watch this. Some people say, PJC, why they just didn't pick up the whole thing? Because that wouldn't be wise.
That's the place of praise that we have to be in where we can support and that we can encourage. Yeah. All big moments, you'll face big moments. We'll face big moments and those big moments allow us to praise God together. You should be celebrating with somebody. Watch this. So maybe it's just me. But when God do something in your life, don't you want to tell somebody? Amen. 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 Yes, sir. When we begin to give the testimonies about what God was doing in this house, the whole church went cuckoo for cocoa points. Amen. When Brother Munn talked about how God had pulled him out of a sentence that he had been over your head for how long? 17 years. For 17 years, church exploded. Yeah. When we, Brother Jason was at the altar the other Sunday, I don't know if you heard the testimony, but he said, I want to I wanna, I wanna have something for my kids for Christmas. I want to be able to give something to them. God, I ain't got nothing, watch this, but a dollar, but I'm going to put that in the offering. Yeah. He put the dollar in the offering. Two days later, Brother Munn got a call, and the man of God said, I'm going to give you a thousand to do the job. Yeah. What happens when somebody else hears that testimony? Yeah. And then somebody else hears that testimony. And then somebody else hears that testimony. It's power in the fellowship. It's power in coming together. A fist is stronger than an open hand. In this season, God is calling us to be a fist together. We have to do it together. And watch this. As a group, as a culture, we've had a problem with coming together. That's good. But look at somebody and say, I got to change the culture. I got to change the narrative. This has to be the season that we come together. This has to be the season that we fellowship. Yes, sir. Because I honestly believe that God is going to give you things to celebrate about that you've never been able to celebrate yeah. about. I yeah. honestly believe that this is the Amen. season for the things that you struggle with. Listen, I can't help but continue to give you hope because that's what I'm walking in. I'm walking in the hope of Jesus. That's what I want everybody to be walking in, that it's going to be a brighter day. Yeah. That, 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 that yesterday is not going to oh, be the boy. same. That it's going to change yes, every sir. day. That yeah. tomorrow something yeah. is going to happen. And if it yeah. don't happen, that day it's going to happen the next yes, day. Remember this. I want to release into you a level of expectation. Yeah. I want your brothers and sisters that you walk in here yes, expecting sir. God to do a miracle. Right. That you walk in here yes, expecting sir. God to do a sign and a wonder. Yeah. Not just in here, oh, but boy. even on your job, even at your home. Oh, there has to be a level of fellowship right. in here. But first, Hallelujah. We got to be yes, able to fellowship with God. Amen. 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 Because there's some things that you can't do by yourself. Oh, God. There's some things that you can't accomplish by yourself. Thank you, Lord. I said this the whole time that I've been at Erskine College, and I'll continue to say it even here, that you don't go as far as your dream. You go as far as your team. Woo. Come on. Two weeks ago, we celebrated Dr. Martin Luther King, and we celebrated his birthday. Why, how could Dr. Martin Luther King do the things that he did? It's because he had a phenomenal team. I'm not talking about, you guys think I'm talking about having church. I'm talking about creating a movement. Yeah. Apostle Deborah, I was talking to Brother Mike, yeah. amen, and I'm, I'm, I'm closing right here, and he brought something to my attention that I had seen in the physical but never seen in the spirit. He said, PJC, do you understand that Dr. Martin Luther King never had a church bigger than 300 people? Mm -hmm. So his capacity to pastor was probably at about 250 to 300. Right. right. But his capacity to lead was millions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One person got there. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, yeah. He never had the capacity to pastor a lot of people like that. But his ability to be able to lead spanned it across the globe. Spanned it. That's good. And so I think what we have to talk about is why are we fellowshipping? We're fellowshipping to create a movement. Yeah. We're fellowshipping to create a, a Jesus movement that will last longer than when, when we, the years that we have lived. We're creating a movement of fellowship to outlast our lives and our children's Amen. lives and our children's children's lives. Do me a favor, go ahead and step to your feet. That's good. Brother Mike, if you could give me a pain in a minute, and then just 
second, I, I, I'll get it back for you. Listen, we've all fell into the places that I talked to, talked about where we've been in debt or we've been distressed and we've been disconnected. But as I look over the sanctuary now, I know that God is bringing us back to a place of fellowship. Amen. Amen. That God is bringing us back to a place. Here it is. Of godly normalcy. Mm. I didn't say worldly normalcy. I said godly normalcy. Because Hebrews tells us that God wants us to meet together. Yes, sir. Yes. Hebrews tells us that God wants us to fellowship. Right. Hebrews tells us that God wants us to be one. Somebody say we are one. We are one. We have to learn how to embrace fellowship. Yes, sir. I'm talking about real fellowship. I'm not just talking about us jumping and screaming in church. I'm talking about fellowship where we meet and where we greet even on the outside of church. Come on, boy. Now, I know things are complicated at this time. I know we're wearing masks. I know we're dealing with all these Delta variants, with all these COVID variants, and now we're dealing with the Delta variant. But watch this. I believe that God is a protector. Yeah. And in that protection, I believe that God gives you wisdom. I'm not saying go here, there, everywhere. You're not saying, hear me say, be in everybody's face to be able to fellowship. Yeah. But I am saying that it has to be a joining together in the spirit. It has to be a coming together of the invisible church where we're all on the same page. Where we're all walking together as one. And so watch this. You can say, Pastor Josh, I don't know what that fellowship looks like, but I know I need to be a part of it. Because I know we're stronger together. I know we're stronger together. Here it is. There's some places in your life where you need God to bring together. And even in this message, you don't have to think about it as just church. How does your family need to fellowship together a little bit better? How do you need to fellowship with your friends a little bit better? This is the next level, Elder Bryson. How do you need to find how to fellowship with your foes? The people that don't like you. Have you prayed for them? Have you ever seated for them? Have you fasted on their behalf? Because it's a blessing that comes with the fellowship of the family. It's a blessing that comes with the fellowship of the friends. And it's a blessing that comes with the fellowship when you take care of others that don't even like you. Amen. That don't appreciate you. Amen. That don't understand you. All heads bow, all heads bow. Why? Because on this moment, on this opportunity, you get a chance to ask God of the places of fellowship that you need to be stronger at in your life. This is what I said to God last night. This is what I said. I don't know what it is that God is going to drop in your heart. God, forgive me for not fellowshipping in the way that you have told me to fellowship. God, forgive me for every person that I did not call. Forgive me for every person that I did not reach out to. Forgive me, oh God, for every person that I did not go see. Father, give me the second chance. Give me the third chance. Give me the opportunity, oh God, to go and fish. Yeah, that's what we're talking about next week. Why we are going to fish? Because it's something that you placed inside my heart, oh God. It's something that you placed inside my spirit that needs to connect with somebody else. And maybe somebody in here disregarded the Holy Spirit. Maybe somebody in here made up an excuse. Maybe somebody in here played the blame game of why you couldn't do it. Or watch this, why they didn't do it for you. None of that even matters. I want you to focus on you. God, what can I do better? The moment of accountability, the moment of responsibility is when you take what happened to you and ask what could, what could you have done better. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for each and every person under the sound of my voice. Father, I pray that over the next seven days that they would hear you clearly. That they would hear you clearly on what it is that you have designed for them to do inside and outside of the church. Father, I thank you, oh God, that you're making crooked places straight I thank you that you're releasing angels on their behalf. I thank you even now, Father, for making them that photo. I thank you right now, oh God, for giving them that power. And oh God, I thank you that this will be a season of praise. This will not, and I, re I remove the spirit of isolation. I remove the mindset 
of that I got to do it all by myself. I revoke the thoughts of trying to stack things and pick them up on my own. Father, when you send help, allow us to be open to receiving the help. Come on, say it out of your mouth. Say, Father, I receive your help. Come on, say it again. Say, Father, I receive your help. Say it one more time with authority. Say, Father, I receive your help. Don't find it strange when God begins to send you people on your job. Don't find it strange when God begins to send you people that's, that you never talked to that's in your dorm room. That may be a part of your campus ministry. Don't think it's strange when God begins to send you all types of people to be able to help you. Because I believe that this is a season of fellowship. And you're not going to do it by yourself. Come on, make a declaration to yourself. I will not, I will not stack these things up. Things. Say, I will not, I will not try, to pick them up try to pick them up by myself. By myself. Say, God, I thank you, I thank you for you. the help that you're sending. Be open, be open, be open. Amen. Listen, I know we got to go. I just need you to sit in this yes. because it's a connecting that God is, is doing, Sister Lizzie. I believe that God is connecting you to people that you've never met. Partnership is going to save your life. Yes. So God told me to tell you the same way this partnership for what it is that you need is going to save your life. It's the same way you're going to save others' lives. I remove the mindset of the black sheep. Yes. I don't know who I'm talking to. God told me to tell you, you are not the black sheep of the family. You are not the black sheep of your job. You are not the black sheep of your team. You are not the black sheep of your entity. 